Welcome to Dimension's Paint Press. Today we're going to talk about playing with paint. Playing with paint. Now here's a new series for the New Year's that I've been thinking about for a quite a long time. And here is where I was always encouraged by a lot of other painters just to, you know, paint bravely and to throw paint on a miniature and just play around with it until you get to something which you really like. Well, I was thinking about that. Well, playing with paint, it's a process, right? This is not something that you just, oh, this is a, con a concept that I'm just gonna get into, unless you are. But the thing is, is that you, you, you're, when you get into the hobby, you kinda wanna do it right, you're following steps, you're getting recipes for, for everything that you're doing, you're trying to follow things to the letter and get it exact, because you know you, you have this fear that you, wanna, you don't wanna mess up. Well, you know, you're not going to. And I'm gonna prove this by actually throwing any colors at random without a plan onto a miniature and then figuring out what looks good and what doesn't. Well, in this series, what we're going to do is I'm playing with a lot of paint and I come up with some interesting combinations and I'm bringing these combinations to you guys so this way you can discover what I discover when I play with paint, the idea for this series. I discovered a different way to do lighter flesh tones for flesh eater quartz. So in that discovery, I want to pass it on to you guys. So let's get on to that video. Alrighty, so black Steinol res primer is the foundation here, and then I followed that up by doing a zenithal of green with Steinol res primer. I seem to like to paint with primer for some reason. I don't know, it's kind of weird, but um, this is the final effect before and after. Uh, we gotta add all the light skin details to it. You see how it pops just like that much more? I'll show you exactly how what I did to get to that uh, stage right there. Um, so first I start off with a 50-50 of a green Steinol Res Primer, since that's the base, and then yellow Steinol Res Primer, which has like that nice flesh tone. Now you can use flesh tones with this, it doesn't matter. I didn't like stick to one, just one pattern to it. Now you notice how I do a test uh, little dots right there? That's just to make sure that I'm really, really accurate. What I'm trying to do here is just getting the tops of the muscles right here. Um, trying to get a little bit of the physics there, but but just like I do with the uh, cobblestones, if you've ever seen any of those videos, uh, I'll post something right here so you can check that out, where I'm trying to get the center of the actual brick, I'm getting the center of the actual muscle right here, just playing around with highlights. I would think like the most raised area would get the most light. And think about that, follow the pattern that you have already laid out with your zenithal highlighting. It'll let you know exactly where the highest highlights should be. And you can see it slowly. It's all about subtlety here. Uh, you wanna be subtle with your transitions and that's what makes a buttery smooth blend or a, uh, a very, very smooth blend here. Sorry, Vince, <laughs> I took buttery smooth from that one. Um, but yeah, this is what makes a complete blend here, uh, just having the subtle transitions. And you can just see that yellow creep in. Again, when you're doing yours and you're playing with your paint, you wanna take your base coat and mix it in with a little bit of a flesh tone in there. And that'll actually have a really dramatic effect for you when you're doing your highest highlights. I love playing with paint because, you know, it kind of like I discover things and I just think they're cool. And I like to bring that information to you. Um, all right, here are all three done because I'm doing this entire unit. Okay, War Colors Red. Um, and that's what I'm doing. War Colors Red is just like a rich, rich burgundy color and that, that magenta thing going on. And I was just playing around with it and I'm trying to get a natal highlight, which is like a reverse zenithal. Um, and that's just trying to get all the shadows, just trying to get all the shadows and trying to make it red. red. And I'm not really too worried about in you know, a little bit of overspray here and there. Now, obviously if this was more of a competition piece, I would like be concerned with it. 
but since this is the flesh eater quartz this is my playing with paint kind of army um i'm just throwing it together and seeing what happens and discovering it me as a painter i'm, I'm always uh, i've always been subscribed to you know certain recipes for certain things but you know that's not really the nature of art the nature of art is getting in there and having some fun with paint and taking some risks so in order to do that i just wanted to play around and see what I can actually accomplish and what that would look like. And even if it looked ugly, I can always paint over it. I know the steps I took to get to this point. I could always just, you know, scrub it and start with black Sino Red primer and do it again. The coats of paint are thin, especially through an airbrush where I thin out the paint. So it's not thick enough that it's going to mess up the details. I can literally just paint over it. I don't have to take the paint off of it and start again from the beginning. Uh, and so no simple green here. I can literally just paint over it and get it um get it to where i have it right now and it really didn't take long to begin with so i'm not worried about you know making errors or anything like that so there it is this is all about subtlety you can barely see the red poking through and that's because I supremely dilute this paint over here with the red war colors. And the reason why I supremely dilute the paint is twofold. One, because I want the transitions to be subtle. I'm trying to just get where I think the shadows are going to be. And two is because war colors, uh, like scale 75, has a gel medium. The gel medium is awesome to do these subtle transitions because they don't break apart like acrylic medium usually does. In other words, I don't need a medium to put in there, a flow aid or any kind of um, like a glaze medium or anything like that. Uh, I still do use a little bit of flow aid, uh, but I don't need glaze medium to get these glazes in because the actual gel medium itself is so densely packed, it actually holds the paint molecules together even if you thin it supremely out. So what I have in there, the mix that I have inside here uh, in that cup is I would say a good uh, one, one drop of of war colors and like five drops of water and one drop of a uh, flow aid and like really supremely diluted just to get those subtle transitions and uh that's where you want to live um to get you know one of those almost ethereal or like realistic kind of uh paint patterns now again, I'm playing around, so I'm not being really specific. Um, I'm gonna take this technique further. I'm gonna push this technique even further, uh, where when I'm doing a competition piece with skin, I'm gonna isolate certain areas with it. Again, just playing with paint, just getting down and dirty with it. This is the army where I just play around. All right, so next up, what we're going to do is Reichlin Flesh Aid. And there it is. I love working with Reichlin Flesh Aid. It kind of ties everything together. It has this nice blue, I mean, uh, reddish, uh, amberish kind of um, feel to it. And it just adds another dimension. Now that you have the red in there, this really just ties it together. Also, this combination of that burgundy and this red would serve really well for bruises, I would think. Right, because it has that like multicolored uh, layer to a bruise right before it turns into like just black and has that red into it as well. The capillaries are broken. And yes, I'm studying bruises. The reason why I'm studying bruises is because I do have a uh, Nurgle army uh, in the wings, uh, possibly next build, I don't know, after I finish the Flesh Eater Quartz. I do have to have a zombie dragon as well as a terror geist that I'm painting, as well as two ghoul kings and uh, an aberrant uh, that I have to paint as well for this army. But then I'm done with the army for the most part, unless I want to add another 80 uh, crypt ghouls to my army, which would make it up to 120 little crypt ghouls running around. But that, you know, crypt ghouls are really easy to paint up. Uh, I find them, I breeze through them, like I'll do two to three a day. And that's an amazing pace for me. All right, so uh, now with the Reichlin Flesh Aid just hitting the areas, you can see like that brown getting toned into it, and it just looks amazing in my opinion. It really does bring life to a lifeless kind of like flesh that I've been doing. Now, it's taken me nine different reiterations of this 
in order to get this kind of tone and you know i'm still playing with paint um when it comes to a flesh eater course these guys right here come in five different uh reiterations so that's like i'm doing one of each <laughs> because i never want anything to look samey in my army i'm just that way you know everything has to be a unique little flower uh if if not if it's all the same i'd get bored with it and you know i'm a modeler and a painter first before an army player so it's all about you know building and having fun while painting i'll only actually get to play very rarely so um <laughs> So, you know, all about the painting and all about the variation, that's where I live. That's my wheelhouse right there. All right, so, you know, this simple technique, and you can see it already, now I'm hitting it again. You could leave it right there for your army, but I wanted to tie in a little bit more green into that just to have the variation, just so it could be green and it matches my army. You can skip this test, uh, this step entirely, but, you know, I just think it blends better with my army. And you can see that funky, I don't even know, uh, I would say pale uh, Flesh Eater core tone right there. Uh, it's just a lot different because I looked at the box art and the box art did not impress me whatsoever. So I just wanted to have my own take on that pale flesh color that you see. And it's just like, it's so funky and so different. I didn't know what else to call it but playing with paint here because real literally I'm just throwing some different, kind of, different hues together of the paint. And I think it came out super well. Well, let me know what you think. Do you think they came out well? And if so, uh, leave a comment in the description. All right, well, time for the outro. So there it is, a different variant for your Flesh Eater Court, something that I just came across by playing with paint. Well, if you like this new series, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you next time on the Miniatures Paintbrush.